Que alegria hoje, nesse dia 12 de julho, festa de... What a joy today, July 12th, a feast of St. Louis in Zeli Mahta. We have been praying this entire novena, and today is the great feast day. It was very impressive to me when I visited the Basilica of St. Therese in France, in Lisieux, and saw in the grand entrance of the Basilica a great portrait of the faces of Louis and Zali Mahta, a holy couple who raised a holy family. Today is a day of joy for families, and there is a day of joy for our spiritual family too. We want to rejoice then with the possibility of being holy in all states of life. And today, in this beautiful reading that the Word of God gives us, we want to welcome all families and say to each one of you how much we understand through the Word of God the complexity of married life, the complexity of family life, and therefore the need for a very solid formation. The community is getting ready to start this great international family festival on Wednesday. So if you haven't signed up yet, sign up now for the subject is complex and there is no ready-made recipes. And that is why we need to deepen, grow in discernment, to grow in wisdom through the Word of God, through the magisterium, through the spirituality of the saints. Exodus 1, 8 to 14 and verse 22. Now a new king arose over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, and they will increase, and in event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the, from the land. Therefore, they set taskmaster over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pithom and Ramses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter and hard. Service in mormor and brick and in very kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrew you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let live the girls. It is terrible the weakness of men who approve a who approve a law like abortion of all children, this collective suicide of children that all the children that were born were thrown into the river for fear that in case of war they would lose. The Hebrews multiply, they had children, they were open to life, and for this reason this abortion law was used to destroy life, to destroy the fruitfulness of family. Today we live a similar time. We live in a time with so many laws against life, so many laws against the fruitfulness of families are there and influence so many people. But now see how beautiful, verse 12. The more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and grew. Here we have the key to evangelization, the key to holy families. The world will oppress us, the laws are often oppressive and do not respect life. We are often called to go against a culture of death that surrounds us, but the more we are oppressed, the more we multiply and grow inwardly. Psalm 124, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when the enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when they were anger and was enkindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away, the torrent would have gone over us, then over us would have gone the rain's water. Blessed be the Lord who was not giving us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the followers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. What would become of us if the Lord were not on our side? What would become of us if the Lord did not break this net that tries to hold us, that tries to take away our glorious freedom of children of God? that tries to abstract and prevent the fruitfulness, not only physical, but also spiritual families. 
What would become of us if the Lord did not free us? What would be of us if He were not on our side? Today, in this Lexio, let us thank the Lord for remaining at our side. He is like a father who walks at our side. He is like a father who does not abandon us. He does not leave families to give up. But on the contrary, he accompanies each one of our families. He accompanies each one of us. Matthew 10, 34 to chapter 11, verse 1. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to earth. I have not come to bring, bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Now when Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and proclaim this message in the cities. This realistic awareness of Christian's vocation is strong. On one hand, he will be persecuted, and sometimes the persecution are within our own family. The enemies will be our own relatives, and it is terrible, it is extremely painful, it is a very hard trial that we often experience in disagreements, in oppositions, and rivalries, and jealousies, competitions within our own family. And this is extremely painful because the family is a place of love. The family is a place of trust, of unconditional love, and when we experience war and opposition, hatred, there is a terrible pain. But also, with this word, we are confronted with the radicalism to which we are called. The word of God comes to put order in our life. The word comes to put God first, family, friends, work. The word of God comes to order our life, and often we can mix up the priorities. It is not your husband, your wife, or your children, or your parents who should be your God. God is God, and He should have the primacy of your life. God is your Lord. God is your only one. And by loving God above all things, you will learn to love all your, your people, and you will learn to carry your cross each day and not to renounce what God asks of you as inner crosses. To welcome another as a prophet will give us the rewards of a prophet. To look around us with a new eye, a new eye of a Christ disciple who realizes that everyone carries a seed of the word, that everyone has something to teach us, who give us a pure heart, a heart capable of receiving many rewards of profit. And that is beautiful because Jesus gathered his own, he forms his own, and then he sends them out on mission. The family festival is this. It is to be gathered, formed, and then we go out to the whole world announcing the word of God. Africa, Europe, the Americas, Asia, Brazil, the Latin America, North America, Oceania, the whole world is waiting for holy families capable of announcing the gospel. Today we celebrate St. Louis and St. Zeli Mahta, the parents of St. Therese, who were the first couple to be canonized in the history of the Catholic Church. This is a very important fact. During the Mass of Canonization, Pope Francis said on October 18, 2015, the Holy Spouses practice Christian service in a family, creating day by day an environment of faith and love, which nurtured the vocation of their daughters, among whom was Saint Therese of the Child Jesus. 
If we make our families places of love and faith, we will raise up saints. This family, during 19 years of marriage, lived all the difficulties that a normal family live. The fin a financial crisis that France was experiencing at that time, where they had to move from the city of Alençon, where they had a very comfortable situation to Lisieux. Louis Martin worked as a watchmaker and a jeweler, and Zélie Martin had a small embroidery workshop. So both worked outside on top of all the responsibilities in their own home. Together with their five daughters, they gave time and money to help the most needy. And it is impressive to see the quality of this family life. And we also we also realize how very devout they both were. Daily Eucharist was law in the family. For God first. Both he and his wife had thought of religious life, consecrated life. But the Lord showed that he, wa he wanted a consecrated life for them. Beautiful. And this is what the new communities are living today. Not only priests and nuns who consecrate their whole lives to God, but families who live a consecration of their lives, of their married love. They got married and had an exemplar, exemplary married life, daily mass, personal prayer, family prayer, fr frequent confession, parish life, and had nine daughters, of whom five died prematurely, and also the suffering of grief. And if that wasn't enough, Zalia will have a cancer and will live this Easter, this Passover offering for this offering for the sanctification of her family. Louis was going to accompany to his, his three daughters to the Carmel. He was going to make the sacrifice to God, and the greatest sacrifice was certainly to live his Therese, whom he called his little queen. St. Ambrose will tell us today, what did you see in baptistry? Water, certainly, but not water alone. You see the Levite ministering there, the high priest asking questions and consecrating. First of all, the apostle taught you that we must fix our eyes not on the things that, that are seen, but on the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are for a time, but the things that are unseen are eternal. In another place, you may read that the invisible things of God from the creation of the world can be understood through the things that have been created, and His everlasting power and Godhead can be known through His works. The Lord Himself says, If you do not believe me, believe at least my works. Then believe that the presence of the Godhead is there. You believe in its activity and refuse to believe in its presence? How could there be activity if there were no presence beforehand? Consider how ancient the mystery is, prefigured as it was in the creation of the whole world. In the, every, in the very beginning, when God made heaven and earth, the Spirit, God tells us, moved over the waters. Was the Spirit not active? He moved over the waters. When the prophet tell us, you that by the word of the Lord the heavens were established, and by the Spirit of His mouth are their array. Realize that the Spirit was active in the making of the world, the fact that He moved over the waters, and the fact that, that He was active, both rest and prophetic testimony. Moses tells us that the Spirit moved over the waters. David testified that the Spirit was active. Listen to another testimony. Oh, the flesh had become corrupt because of its sin. God said, My Spirit will not remain in and for by the stain of more serious sin, God resolved to restore the gift he had given. He sent the flood and restored Noah, the righteous man, into the ark. When the flood began to subside, Noah sent first a raven, then a dove, which, as we read, came back into an olive branch. You see water, you see wood, you look on a dove, and you hesitate to believe the mystery. The water is that in which the flesh is dipped dipped to wash away all its sin. In it all weakness is buried. The wood is that to which the Lord Jesus was fastened when he suffered for us. The dove is the one in whose likeness the Holy Spirit descended 
as you have learned from the New Testament, the spirit who breeds in the spirit who brings into you peace of soul tranquility of mind it is very beautiful to realize that we are called to be families that live a new grace a spiritual grace a grace in god today on the second day we realize how much this holy family calls us to a calls us to a contemplation of a life of heaven we must be as center as said of her parents, their parents more worthy of heaven than of earth. On the second day, look at the beautiful passage we can read on this book about Louis and Zeli, which reads, they are not parents to be copied, nor are parents to be put in the attic. It would be not only impossible, but counterproductive to reproduce their pedagogical method alone. Why? Because every successful educational relationship is born from a genius of unique instit intuition capable of penetrating the intelligence and the heart and of arousing positive responses. To be saint is not to copy. To be saint is not to want ready-made recipes. To be holy is to get down on one's knees and to receive the pedagogy inspired for each child for each situation. Counterproductive because the application of a method valid in certain contexts in another can provoke a reaction of rejection that is difficult to recover. Family education is received on one's knees. So let's ask Louise and Zeli Martin this grace for each parent, grandparent, educator, but also for children, so that the whole family on its knees prays and asks for this grace. Today in Amores Leticia, I want to read to you number 51 and 52. When we do not have holy families, when we do not have families who pray, when we do not have families who, got, who get down on their knees to seek this grace, look what happens. Drugs, drugs use was also mentioned as one of the scourges of our time, causing immense suffering and even break up for many families. The same is true alcoholism, gambling, and other addictions. The family could be the place where these are prevented and overcome. But society and politics fail to see that families at risk lose the ability to ask to help their members. Impressive, what Pope says. A family at risk loses the ability to react to protect its own members. We see the serious effect of this breakdown in families torn apart the young uprooted and the elderly abandoned, children who are orphans of living parents, adolescents and young adults confused and unsupported. As the bishops of Mexico have pointed out, violence within families breeds new forms of social aggression since family relationships can also explain the tendency to a violent personality. Be careful because it is in the family that we form citizens. This is often the case with family where communication is lacking, defensive attitudes predominant, the members are not supportive of one another, family activities that encourage participation are absent. It is precisely for this reason that the family festival has been received as a great gift for the community, for the seeds of the word community. For it is a school of learning how to prepare lunch together, to pray together, to share about a, a theme together. It where everyone from the youngest to the oldest are called to be formed by the word of God. Family activities that encourage participation are absent. The parental relationship is frequently conflictual and violent, and relationship between parents and children are marked by hostility. Violence within the family is a breeding ground of resentment and hatred in the most basic human relationships. Very strong, this word of Pope Francis. No one can think that we can weaken off the family as that natural society founded on marriage 
will prove beneficial to society as a whole. The contrary is true. It opposes a threat to the to mature growth of individuals, the cultivation of community values and the moral progress of city and countries. There is a failure to realize that only the exclusive and indissoluble union between a man and a woman has a plenary role to play a society as a stable commitment that bears fruit in their life. We need to acknowledge the great variety of family situations that we can offer a certain stability. But the fact of same-sex unions, for example, may not simply be equated with marriage. No union that is temporarily or close to the transmission of life can ensure the future of society. But nowadays, who make an effort to strengthen marriages, to help married couples overcome their problems, to assist them in the work of raising children and, in general, to encourage the stability of the marriage bond. The Family Festival wants to be this help for you and for all your family members. May God bless us in this great race of preparation.